Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I'm going to take a look at MX Linux. Yes, the newest version of MX Linux is out, finally. Wow. Well, I shouldn't say finally, it's not like it takes years in between releases, but still, uh, I'm really excited to see this. I've been away for a few weeks, so I haven't done any videos lately, so I finally got two seconds to get back into town after traipsing all over the state, and just in time to check out this new version of MX Linux so can't wait to dig in and give it a try here I'm right now out at the MX Linux homepage here and I'm looking at the XFCE we got XFCE KDE and Flexbox available Flexbox is a lightweight desktop that's great on older machines and uh, more potato type hardware there <laughs> but I think I'm going to go with the flagship XFCE because that's their, their main flagship one. And besides that, I like XFCE. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to hit the download link here. And here's our download page. And it gives a little bit of information on what to choose. And there's a couple of major versions here. Of course, we got the 64-bit, 32-bit, and then the Oz, which is the AHS. And the Oz is really only necessary if you have the latest and greatest hardware maybe you got a brand new machine and it's less than a year old so you would probably have better results with that because it's got a slightly newer kernel a 6.4 as opposed to 6.1 really for most of us there's no difference really unless you had some cutting edge new nvidia video card or some you know fancy thing like that but for the rest of us the normal version here 64 bit will be just perfect so with that i'm going to download this baby click on it load it in and then i'll be right back okay and here i am i'm at my boot up screen here so we're just going to go into the live version i'm going to just press enter here and load that in and as you can see the date on it is july 31st which was today wow and actually yesterday i downloaded it last night so it's actually august 1st now but yeah you know so here we are we got our uh live environment loading in now and wow it's looking great right off the bat man that's one thing about mx linux is it just never seems to disappoint me right off from the get-go so i think that is cool uh and so here's our environment and we got our panel here located over on the left hand side like in desktop mode there i forgot what they call that exactly but desk desk lit mode or something <laughs> So here's our welcome screen, and I'm just going to get right to it. I'm going to hit the click install, and wow, I love the beautiful graphics and the animations. They really go first class with MX Linux. That's one thing I really love about this uh, this distro is uh, they really put a lot into this, and I got to give the team a thumbs up. So I'm going to hit next here, and here we got type of installation, and so by default it's asking to customize, but... Uh, which is good, but I'm going to go ahead and just select the, the regular install. And what that'll do is wipe the whole drive. And I'm good with that because I don't have anything on here I want to keep anyway. So I'm going to hit yes and let that go in. And as you can see, it's already starting to, to move along here and copy files. I really like that. It's so efficient on the install. So as you go along, it, it's actually already kind of working a little bit in the background. I'm going to go with the default here with the computer names. That's all good. And then system clock, the default settings are okay. I do kind of like the 24-hour format a little better, but for the sake of the video, I'll keep it default. And so our next setting is our user account. So I'll just go with Toadwick as usual. Give it some passwords. And then pop over here and I'll check the root administrator. I always like having a root account and give it a password. And these are lame passwords. And then you got your auto login, which I would not recommend, um, especially if you have anything personal on your computer. And then we have the save live desktop changes. So that's really cool too, because if you make any changes in your live environment, installed stuff or whatever, you could check that box and save the changes that you made right here on the live environment. How cool is that? And after I click next, it's already in the install, and we're like at 72% already. That's really amazing. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen an install go this fast. I typically will pause the video to let the install do its thing, and then I come back five or ten minutes later. But this is going so fast, I'm not even sure if I have to pause it. This could actually be a first <laughs> by uh, doing an install without a pause, because now I'm at 93%. Wow! 
wow, that is totally amazing. I'm pretty sure something's going to hang here and make me pause, but uh, the fact that I've already gotten 95, 96 plus percent here and now 97 is just amazing. So there's a double thumbs up right there um, for that. Wow. And so now it's kind of, you know, thinking there because it's got to do the init RAM FS there. So uh, that might take a little bit. It's all done. Wow. <laughs> okay. So there you go. That's a first. I'm going to hit finish here. Let it reboot. And so I guess all I need to do is just press enter. So I'll do that real quick. And oh, it even has a little reminder on here to show you to remove your ISO. So you can uh, boot without it. Okay. And so now I'm back into the reboot. Remove the ISO there image, and as you can see, we got the 6.1 kernel loading there, which is awesome. And nice blast screen. Wow, I am totally liking that. So I'm telling you, I just never get disappointed when I mess with MX. I think that's kind of one of the reasons I'm, it's my favorite, one of my favorite distros. I'm going to log in here. So it looks like everything installed okay. And we got our panel over here on the side still by default, which is cool. So I don't even have to move. Nice. And here's our welcome screen. So it looks like everything went so smooth. And it really amazes me how quick that install was. Here we got uh, all our items here. And the main two items would be the tools and the tweak. So let's just take a quick look at the tools. Here we got our snapshot, live USB, CH root, uh, boot options, user manager. So yeah, a lot of things that we might find in the setup and not so in the setup. Some of these I think are utilities that are related to what you would find in the setup, but are redesigned to be a little bit more user friendly. There's a conky thing there that that's your conky manager, I think. So if you want to tweak your conky which is uh, up in your upper right corner there you can kind of do that here here you can just have it show up on desktop one or down here you can change the format of your day and month and then of course uh, you got your edit settings so you can go right into the configuration uh, if you know your way around a little bit then you can get right in there and just tweak it to your heart's content so that is very cool and then our Conkey Manager, of course, will let you go in here and uh, mess with widgets and themes and everything else. A little bit advanced for most people, but overall you got some features even for the mortals, the mirror mortal, <laughs> like changing colors. So that is very cool. A nice first impression again. And then some other things here, Codex installer. If you want to add some Codex, that's really nice. It makes it easier. Um, here's our user manager. And that's something we'll see when we go into our settings later. And then we got our tweak. Tweaks are always fun. So here's our panel tweaks. So this is a nice utility to just kind of consolidate all your theming and stuff right here. If I hit right, it goes off over to the right side. Nice. And then typically I would want that on the left though. And then display panel horizontally. So we could do that and it'd show up on the bottom. Uh, except it didn't change like the left one did. When I went left, right, it switched right away. But that one didn't go anywhere. What's up with that? How about top? Nope. Bottom. Nope. Okay. Uh, hmm. Yeah, that's switching there. That's kind of weird that the vertical switches, but that doesn't. Um, maybe I'm missing something. I'll come back to that. So there's our config options display, but this is bugging me. So I got to figure out what's up here. Uh, you're scaling there, but uh, the bottom. Oh, I see what's going on. There's an apply button. It was so big I couldn't see it. Okay, so we hit apply. Now it's on the bottom. Cool. So that's cool. Uh, that's all I had to do. <laughs> So apparently you got to apply it for the horizontal, but not for the vertical settings. But I got to remember that apply button. That button is so big that, like I said, I can't see it. So here we got dock-like plugin, which is cool. I like the dock-like plugin. And so that kind of gives us our modern look there on the XFCE. And I just moved that back to the bottom again because I kind of want to show you the previews here for dock-like. And it looks better from the bottom. So if I set task list plugin to dock like go into options 
Here's an option here that says show preview thumbnails to open windows and apply. Now, uh, with my Thunar open, if I just go down and hover over Thunar, I can see the thumbnail preview. So that's something really cool that's not really native in XFCE right now. Uh, things that you see in Cinnamon and Gnome and so forth, but not XFCE, so that dock-like plugin is pretty awesome. I really like that. And so that's how you turn that on. And you can actually use it when it's in the vertical setting as well. Uh, I just kind of like it better there. And then, of course, you can switch to window buttons, and then this will give you your, your normal window buttons that you would normally see on XFCE. So you have the option not to use dock-like as well. Personally, I kind of like the dock-like because it just looks a little more modern to me. So I'm just going to change it back here, hit apply, and now we got our dock-like look again. And then if you don't like the previews, uh, now you know how to turn them off. So here's our theming. So here we can just kind of set our themes universally right from here. So this is kind of nice. A little more convenient than the appearance settings that you normally go to in settings because there's a lot of pre-configured stuff that's already here. There's MX Comfort Dark and that would kind of change your whole theme um, application and window manager. And then here we have our icon. So there's GNOME, which is eh, kind of old looking. And then ePapyrus and Papyrus MX Blue and then MX Blue Dark, Dark Panes, I guess that is. So probably applies the dark theme to the pain, I guess. Uh, so cool. And then MX Blue Dark. And then we have our compositor settings here. So you can actually choose from your compositor. And MX Dark, I think, is kind of cool. You know, that would be like a universal theme. Actually, your universal theme is there. So if you hit Apply, uh, the other themes below are, are kind of separated your themes for your application and your window manager. So up here is where you go for your universal. And then here we got our compositors. Here you can change it to Compton if you wanted to. Uh, typically, I wouldn't see a reason to do that unless you're having some kind of screen tearing issues. So yeah. And then our display tweaks, uh, which I would probably stick with the default config options. This might be significant because by default, you just single click on a folder and it'll take you directly in there. And for some people that might not be uh, comfortable. So that's where you can disable that. Same with the desktop. If you click it once, it's going to open an item. And if you're used to double clicking, you can uncheck that as well. And hey, why did that not work? Hmm. <laughs> I unchecked the box. Okay, so I went, oh yeah, wait. Uh, hmm. Yeah, the big apply button. There it is. The one that's so big I can't see it. Okay, that's better. So now I can click on these. And same with the desktop. I can select them now. Uh, and it doesn't go straight into it. And then here we got reset light DM if you hose your theme. And that'll put it back to the default, which is nice. Uh, light DM is your login area. When you log in, you see the, the login panel and all that. And so I'm going to apply that and go back to our vertical panel here uh, because that is just kind of nice. And you can still see that the dock-like plugin is shown in the preview. So even in the vertical mode, very cool. So I'm going to close that. And I think that kind of covers the welcome screen. And then here we got our about. So it'll show us our latest version here. And you can see that it's based on Debian 12.1. Nice. And so here in our menu, you can see by default, our applications are on the left side. And then on the right side are the categories. And they're already auto hovering, which is kind of cool. Personally, I'm more comfortable with the categories over on the left side instead. So I'm just going to right click here and then select properties. And I'm going to go in, I think it's under behavior, so, uh, or appearance. Here we go. Um, so position categories next to panel button. So now if I go down here and look, you can see my categories are on the right side, on the left side. So much better. Uh, I like that better. I'm more comfortable with that. If you want to tweak it a little more, we can go to, uh, I think it's general. And then right here we can do show as icons. And to me, that's kind of a little bit more of a modern look. So now, as you can see, our applications are in an icon format instead. And to go a little bit further, I would take the application icon size and make that a little bigger. Go from smaller to maybe normal. Let's see what that looks. Yeah, I kind of like that better. And then this whisker menu that we're looking at is actually 
dynamically sizable so we can just kind of push that over and that'll remember those settings too and we could even make it taller if you wanted to like if you added more categories uh we could change both ways so yeah to me that looks nicer i'm gonna go with that and i think everything else i'm happy with so there we go that's how you can tweak the whisker menu if you didn't know how to do that already and so we got a lot of nice accessories in here there's our conky toggle so we can hit that and just toggle it right off so if you need to do that that just uh, makes it easy peasy you don't have to worry about changing the configuration and logging out back in so i really like that and so lots of lots of accessories and and things and there's magnus that's that's a cool magnifying utility so it shows up in the middle of the screen and then wherever i put my mouse it's going to show the magnified version right there in the center so if you're a little bit uh if you have trouble seeing small things uh, this could be handy over here now you can see the hard drive 13 percent 17 percent and cpu at three percent so if that's hard for you to see normally that little magnus there uh, really does a trick so that's kind of a cool little uh, utility there and then we got some other stuff midnight commander that's a a nice like textile textile that's kind of funny <laughs> Uh, like a text like file manager or a console maybe that's the word I'm looking for and so here we got this and I like this this always kind of reminds me of uh, DOS shell from way back in the old DOS days of Windows before Windows <laughs> from Microsoft and yeah for me it, it gives me kind of that nostalgic feeling to kind of go through this and play with it because it's like I said it it reminds me a lot of DOS shell uh, of course in DOS shell you couldn't just go clicking around uh, but this is really kind of fun to play with and here we got our directory structure and you can come down here and manually type in your paths too you also got different things you can click on down here like your menu and view and edit and so forth if you wanted to edit a file and here I could just like click on that and go into the go up a level you can FTP in somewhere with this which is cool you can use the terminal down here and type in CD dot document and now I'm in my documents folder which is nice and I got a dual pane there so I can see the other side as well which makes it more efficient so like if I wanted to edit that I could select my bash RC and hit the edit there and then I'm right inside a text editor which is really cool console base so that's cool you could go in there and hose up your configuration to your heart's content just by getting in there how cool is that so that is a file manager i think is pretty cool and then here we got our games we got like mahjong and so forth then our document scanner LibreOffice. not much in graphics there just a picture viewer and then here we got our firefox under internet and just wanted to see the version here to see if it's like an esr or what we got here uh being debian you know and wow okay 115.0.3 so it looks like we're using the debian version of firefox which i like that personally i think that's cool so big plus to the mx people as well nice and so what else can we look at let's see we left off at internet and so you got thunderbird uh, for an email client then here under multimedia we got vlc media player so that's kind of cool i like seeing that by default that gets all your codecs in there the essentials and then we got our deb installer format usb so tons of mx tools uh one of the things that stands out with mx linux are all the tools uh codecs installer and here we got our mx package installer mx tools which we were kind of in before from the welcome screen and our welcome screen was there also and here we got uh looks like LibreOffice installed and then under settings these are all our settings that you would find in your control panel there and then system so these are our system things like the conky toggle toggle we were in before htop might as well launch that real quick just to kind of see that so it looks like we're around 760 megs uh which is not too shabby and i'm going to try to magnify that and it's not working uh huh that's weird for some reason when i control plus plus or control shift plus there it's not magnifying no zoom so 
yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, maybe that's my system. When all else fails, I guess you can just do it through the menu. But um, typically, I just use my keyboard shortcut and, and do that, uh, the Control shift plus But um, hmm, pretty weird. Okay, I guess I can live with that. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, right around 761 megs. And so that's uh, pretty resource friendly. Kind of what I would expect out of XFCE. And anything else in here? We already looked at Midnight Commander, uh, which is a cool app. There's Synaptic. So Synaptic is kind of one of my favorite package managers overall, I think, in Debian and Ubuntu-based systems. And Synaptics is kind of a front end to app. So there's no real graphics in here, but it's very fast. And it's the next best thing to use in the console here if you need a GUI based application to look around. And so here it's kind of showing all the packages that are installed already. And I'm just going to go look for something uh, just to see, like, maybe we can install, like, the usual Inkscape. So we'll just type that in there and, hmm, yeah, I'm out of practice using Synaptic because I'm in the console so much there. <laughs> uh oh, I'm looking at the, yeah, the stuff that's already installed. So, uh, and it would help to use the search button and not the filter. So I'm going to type in Inkscape and uh, not showing a result. That's kind of weird. Maybe I got to refresh my repos there to get it to load in. Typically that does that when you first launch it, but maybe they didn't. I'm going to go to my sections here and just kind of rerun that again real quick. Yeah, so I think I need to re reload here. So I'm just going to do that real quick. We'll just go over here and click this button and now it's downloading stuff. So I think that's all we had to do is just reload this guy. And so any second now it ought to be like poof, showing us some results with Inkscape and all the other stuff that goes with it. <laughs> And if not, then uh, I'll just distract you by saying, what's over there? And then run. Okay, there's Inkscape. So very cool. And it looks like a new version there. Very good. So 1.22.2-B1. So that is very respectably up to date for Debian standards especially. So nice. I am liking it. I'm going to hit apply there and just let it install. So we'll hit apply again. And now it's going to download the package and it should just install it just like that because Synaptics is quite fast, just like the terminal. Some of the heavier GUI based package managers are a little bit slower because you got some more overhead. But uh, as you can see, very quick there in Synaptics. And so now if I jump up and now I'm going to open up my terminal here and I'm going to do an install in the console just to show the contrast between the two. And I'm going to I can't zoom in on this either. Huh. So, yeah, the keyboard shortcut there for zooming just uh, is kind of non-existent. So let's do sudo apt install and let's install GIMP and waiting for cache lock. Oh, I guess we got to close Synaptic here. So we'll just close that real quick. That's better. All right. So let's hit yes. And that should install in a flash too. And this is the way that I typically like and prefer to install is right here through the console. It's just a lot more efficient, in my humble opinion. There we go. Okay, so we got that installed. Now if we come up here, we should be able to see both apps under graphics, and there they are, Inkscape and GIMP. So we'll just start with Inkscape, and I just want to launch it to just check the theming because I changed to a dark theme, and in a lot of distros, when you change into from light to dark or vice versa, it messes up theming in some apps if it's not set up uh, really well. But here you can see that Inkscape looks just fine. And typically in most apps, uh, Inkscape isn't really that troublesome. And so I'm thinking GIMP is going to look just fine as well. But the real test will be LibreOffice. But let's just double check GIMP here. And changing the dark theme didn't hurt that at all, which I was kind of expecting. And we're at GIMP version 2.10.34. Nice. Now I want to go and check LibreOffice because this is the test for most distros. Typically when you go from a light theme to dark or vice versa from the default, uh, it messes up your toolbar here, the theming. But not surprisingly, MX Linux is on top of all that because it looks just perfect. Not an issue at all right there. Everything is configured properly. 
If you go to options and view, this is where you would actually change your theme. If you wanted to change it, if for some reason it didn't look right to you, that would be the place to do it. But uh, yeah, BMX people, they're on top of things. So not even a concern. <laughs> so excellent. So I'm going to just kind of reposition that here a little bit. And then let's jump in here. And here's all our settings, but you can also go up the icon here to the settings manager. And that's got everything kind of all consolidated inside a nice little window here. Uh, if you don't want to do it through the through the whisker menu. The whisker menu is nice though if you just want to go in there and select something individually that you already have in mind like you know changing your appearance or something. Here's the appearance in the tools uh, we kind of had a different layout there because everything was kind of in a different layout so you could choose from some preset themes and here's our about me you can change your avatar here but I don't have any pictures on here of course because this is a new install but you could put a custom picture in there and add an avatar which is always nice brightness sys tray that's kind of cool I like that you can uh, add in your brightness uh, here at presentation mode I usually click on the battery because sometimes you find utilities that have brightness in the battery, but not so on XFCE. But here you got this, so this is cool. That, that is accessible right from there, which is neat. I like that. Typically, it, I set my brightness somewhere around 70 or so. Very convenient to just kind of have that right there available in your settings area. Pretty cool. <clears throat> and then we got our file manager settings, desktop, MX tools and tweaks which we were in before workspaces window manager tweaks is always kind of cool uh, i think i'll click on that and then if we go in here uh typically i don't touch anything except for our compositor here and this is kind of nice if you want to just kind of add a little bit of opacity type bling to things like this will make your upper your top bar here your window decoration more transparent or more opaque and inactive windows we could back that off there and then the windows in the background would get more transparent so you could have that effect as well which is nice you can make it super transparent if you want if you really like looking at the back of your desktop you could make it triple transparent <laughs> or invisible if you like a challenge <laughs> so that's nice and i would probably kind of have it like that probably that that would be kind of comfortable for me and then of course making it a little opaque less opaque while you're moving that's a nice effect too that's something i kind of like so that's a standard setting with me and i'm thinking that's cool so i'm going to go back to all settings and then here we got like our also mixer utility which is cool keyboard uh that's a staple that i always adjust so restore numlock state at startup i use the numlock a lot so i would typically check that so that way the numlock stays on then we got our application shortcuts so here you can set in your own custom shortcuts if you like so for example i can add an application in here and let's say i wanted to make a keyboard shortcut for inkscape so in here i would just type in inkscape give it a name it can be any name you could call it uh that graphic app if you want to but for me inkscape works the best so i'm going to type in Gra inkscape i almost said graphics app and then when you press ok now you can do a key combo so i just press super i super is that windows key there on your keyboard and so now if i press that key setting super i there you go see inkscape just comes right up with a keyboard shortcut so if you weren't familiar with keyboard shortcuts that's how easy it is and it opened inkscape right up so i think that is really cool and then if you ever want to change any of your keyboard shortcuts all you have to do you can see super i is there but if i hit edit then i could actually change it or even change the command if i wanted to <laughs> but super i we could hit ok and then it'll let us press another combination so let's try control i and now you can see we got it changed to control i so if i press that then it would open again however i like super i better so i'm just going to go back in here and change it to super i and then back to all settings so those are our keyboard shortcuts and then we got our mouse so if you want to go left-handed if you're a lefty that's where you would change it and then i'm going to go back to right-handed because i just happen to be that and here we got our dmz for our white for our cursor 
Uh, but I'm going to stay with black. And then we got our light DM greeter settings, uh, dashboard, and so forth. And greeter, uh, that is your login window when you turn on your computer and you see the login screen. So this is, you can add a different image in there if you like, a background image. Uh, you can put in, set your custom user image there if you want your picture on the screen or something else. Uh, this is the position of your uh, login fields where you, you t show your username and password. And by default, it's in the middle, but you can move it over to the left if you wish or right, up or down, and other settings. So typically, that's something most people wouldn't mess with. But uh, here we got add block. So I'm going to type that. And I kind of want to see what this is all about. The Antics Advert Blocker Tool. So uh, blocks many advertising servers related to, uh, looks like ads, block ads, malware, pornography, gambling, fake news, and social media. Wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I guess I would uh, play with that a little bit. So I'm just going to hit OK here. And so by default, it's blocking malware, sources, pornographic, gambling, and fake news vehicles or websites <laughs> vehicle. So uh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I would probably go with that. I, I don't need any of those stuff showing up in my ads. And then I'll hit OK. And so that is a really cool little feature. That's something I never paid much attention to in the past. So I like that. Very nice. Another double thumbs up. Um, excellent. So I'm going to slide that over real quick. And let's right click and take a look at our desktop settings. And so it looks like we got a lot of wallpaper showing up. Nice. And these kind of look new to me, a lot of them. Uh, that is a cool background. And I'm wondering if I got a show desktop icon over here on my panel so I can kind of toggle back and forth. Uh, I'm not used to looking at it in the desktop mode here, but um, oh, there it is. OK, so yeah, I can hit that, get a better view of the wallpaper, click it again, and then it will come back. And wow, I like that. Oh, man. Yeah, that is stunning there. I just might actually keep that one. Uh, I could almost not look any further after looking at that one. <laughs> Great colors in there. Uh, there's a nice one, too. I, I kind of like that landscape. Uh, that's got some cool colors in it, too, and the reflection. Very cool. So that is another choice that would be a candidate very high on my list. And there's a nice background, cool pattern. And that painting, wow. Well, that's another contender there. I really like that painting. Um, might be something I might have to kite for my own collection there. <laughs> so, wow. But, yeah, this one still wins out. I, I really like that one. So I'm going to go with that, I think. And then here we got our icons. So we can choose what icons to show. We can adjust the sizes of the icons here if we wanted to. I'm just going to kind of stretch this window down so I can see my defaults better. Here you can click that and it'll show the home folder. Um, you can show your trash, put that in there. Remove all little devices if you want to see like a thumb drive show up when you plug it in. And then your file system. So if you need direct access to your file system. And so here the home folder gives you a quick access to your file manager home folder. So that is the desktop settings and one of my favorite spots. Yes. So I'm going to reopen Thunar there just to have it there for show. <laughs> just because it gives me something to clutter up the desktop with. And then I'll just kind of shrink that down a little bit. Because it was a little big and I couldn't grab the corner for some reason. So I'm going to minimize that just real quick. And then I'm going to come over here. And let's go to our panel properties here, or preferences. I did that by right-clicking. And so here we can adjust our panel and even add things. But desk bar is our default setting here. Uh, and that's typically used in the vertical position where it is now. And then here's our appearance. So we can use dark mode if you wanted it to use a dark mode with a light theme. And then our opacity, so we can make our panel a little opaque or a little a little transparent and then here's our items so these are the different items that correspond to our panel and let's add a weather widget here so i'm going to go in here and add that and now you can see at the bottom there we got our weather widget and then i'm just going to close and then if i want to do our settings i can just go into the burger menu up here right here and the 
tab that I'm most interested in is a scroll box, but you got all those other ones to choose from. But here I like to display the temperature with my weather widget. So I'm going to hit that and then click add and that'll put our temperature in there too. But I'm not seeing it. Maybe that's because I'm in desk bar mode because desk bar is more compact than like the standard mode. So if I went over here and changed our mode to like uh, vertical instead, there we go. Now we can see the 70 degrees in there. Uh, Typically, I kind of like the horizontal overall if I'm going to have my weather app in here. And so if I go there and change it to horizontal, now you can see it's way up on top. So I'm dragging it down. And I had to unlock my panel to do that. So that's why I unchecked the lock panel box there. But now we can see that uh, our weather is showing up down there. And it kind of looks nicer in that position. So for the weather widget uh, specifically, I just kind of like, I like that on a horizontal panel. Uh, but that's just me. A lot of people probably don't even want that. I just added in a separator here and I'm just going to push this up next to the weather plugin. That'll give us a little bit of space down here between this and the other sys tray items. And we can also make that invisible so the separator is not visible. So we can just go up to transparent and then that makes the separator disappear, but you get got the space there so that's kind of how I like it personally and so yeah that kind of looks nice I got my weather app there it's 70 balmy degrees outside and it just goes great with this whole background and everything and with that I think I am ready to just give my two cents I am so impressed with this I had a feeling that I was not going to be disappointed when I got into MX and I'm not it just looks gorgeous and uh, it is so snappy. The feel on it is wonderful. And the MX Linux, I haven't used MX in a while, but it really feels different. The, the layout or something just seems very smooth. I, I can't really put my finger on it. I think in the previous review I did last year, uh, the, the panel was still in desk bar mode vertically, I think, uh, but something really feels different this time around. And it could be the fact that we're running 12.1 now, and I don't know, but it, it just seems to have a nicer, more modern feel to it. Like I remember last time I was really impressed with MX Linux. It was just the theming wasn't quite where I liked you know, back then, I can't remember now because it was so long ago, but I just remember the theming feeling a little bit off. But other than that, I really liked the distro before. But now, man, if, if that was the case, if I'm remembering correctly, they nailed it this time because the theming to me is spot on. It feels great. I don't feel like I have to go in there and modify anything. I love the new default background that came with it as well and although wildflower had a really nice background as well the default theming just didn't feel great to me so that is a big change that i really like and it really feels zippy uh, that's something i just kind of noted to myself mentally a few times while i was running around in here you know how quick everything was just launching and just how smooth it felt. So another thing that just made the whole experience really pleasant. And I can see why MX is consistently in that number one spot there on distro watt, <laughs> because it really is a distro that you can tell just by looking at it has a lot of work and a lot of dedicated people in there putting a lot of time and effort to make this a top quality distro. So I would have to give them about 50 thumbs up for that alone. Uh, and that would take me uh, like all day to do that. So yeah, you know, I'll just kind of keep it down to about 10. And yeah, I, what can I say? I mean, the, the distro really speaks for itself. I am really pretty confident that if you downloaded MX Linux and gave it a try for yourself, if you haven't already, you won't be disappointed. I think you're going to really love the environment. And of course, you got the stability of Debian and the MX repos. Uh, are really good at just keeping things as up to date as possible for a bookworm release. And it's one of those rare Debian releases where I don't feel like I'm left behind when I'm in MX Linux. In fact, I feel more cutting edge and sometimes I feel as cutting edge as arch, dare I say. <laughs> But it does it does make you feel that way. And the times I've used MX Linux, sometimes I just got bored because 
I wasn't having any headaches to solve. So if you don't like having headaches and you just like things just working, then you found the right place right here. And with that, I hope all my babbling was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.